It is Monday, June 27th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Monday puzzle today, so shouldn't be a particularly difficult crossword, and it will have a theme of some kind. So should be should be an approachable one all around. And this approachable edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Overfull Hitbox, Joseph Schwalbach, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the inimitable Connor O'Neill. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. If you'd like to join their ranks, you can get access to the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug as a benefactor, but at any level of the Patreon campaign for a few pounds a month or the equivalent in your local currency, you can get all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And speaking of one that's going up this week, yesterday I spent two hours solving four puzzles from the um, Daily Solve Discord chat server. So I need to clip a bit of time out of that, not out of the actual solves themselves, but just out of get them to rearrange the order and things like that. Um, so look, look forward to that. I think it's safe to say some of these puzzles were not squarely in my domain of knowledge. Uh, so definitely a bit of a challenge for me. Uh, but look forward to that if you'd like to see me struggle with some community-created crosswords. Those are from the Constructor's Corner and Constructor's Corner Complete channels in the Daily Solve Discord chat server. So if you're interested in um, learning about constructing your own crosswords or solving crosswords created by members of this community and possibly even giving feedback to the constructors of those crosswords, head over to the Daily Solve Discord chat server and there's a link in the description field underneath the video. Maybe you can solve some of these much more quickly than I did. I suspect many of you would be able to solve them more quickly than I did. There were certainly some references on there that were um, completely outside of my, my, my knowledge, but probably less so for others. Anyway, let's get on to today's crossword, uh, the Monday crossword constructed by Drew Schmenner. And actually, sorry, I've completely forgot to uh, look up who this is. Anyway, um, I don't recognize Drew Schmenner's name, so probably not an extraordinarily prolific New York Times crossword constructor, but who knows? And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Ritzy. Oh, look, we've got, sorry, before I start, we have these, um, these five parallel staggered little groups of three cells. I'm curious to see what those are about. Anyway, Ritzy could be posh, as in upscale or high-end, that sort of thing. I'm not sure, but let's check the crosses and see. Um, protective gear for inline skaters. That could be knee pads, pads maybe, or shin pads maybe. Here we have ye old shop, the old shop. Um, that's uh, just sort of the stereotypical way to refer to an old-timey uh, store. Places to rejuvenate oneself, oneself maybe spas. And Georgetown University athletes. Let's, let's look at the crosses here. I'm's competitor. That's a um, a pet food brand, Alpo, I've heard of. And when the Allied invasion of Normandy was launched, famously on D-Day. And 123 Blank Street, Big Bird's address. Well, it must be Sesame Street, right? And so the Georgetown, Georgetown University athletes are the Hoyas. I think I've heard of that before, actually. Sound at the start of gentle and giant, a soft G. Animal relative, an astonished person, may claim to be. So this is this will be from a saying or something. A mother something? Animal relative. Um, the, the, because of relative, I'm thinking maybe family members. Are, a family member name is involved here? I'm not sure. Charge for an overdue payment would be a late fee. And cigar residue would be ash. An office, office address abbreviation could be maybe a suite number. An office might have a suite number in addition to the street number. Like the caboose among all the cars on, on a train would be the last car. And Perry Blank is a classic legal drama. Perry Mason, classic legal drama that was recently um, remade for HBO. Pageant whose hosts have included Bob Barker, Dick Clark, and Steve Harvey. Uh... I don't know this firsthand, but my guess would be Miss America. Now this is this has these three. It doesn't fit though. Hmm. Not sure. I wonder if it is one of those Miss somethings. 
let's look at this. To harden to something is to inure to it. If you become hardened to a particular, I don't know, hardship, you become inured to it. So I wonder if these are all going to start with SU something, maybe sun. Oh, maybe it's a setting sun. Oh, and what's this clue? Predominant religion of Indonesia and Pakistan. That would be Sunni Islam. So there we go. So may, uh, maybe it is. Maybe it's the rising sun, actually, I suppose, because if we're going this way through the crossword, oh, that's funny. So let's let's see. Let's see what happens if we put sun into all of these spaces. Let's speculatively try that out. Now, what does that make? Dashboard mounted navigator. Yes, a GPS unit. And then here we have, oh, right, here's the animal relative. Um, so if it is a relative and it is Mother Sun, Mother Sunday, I'm not sure. I don't think I know this phrase. And then what about this? What glows in the West at day's end? Or a hint to this puzzle's sequence of shaded squares. The setting sun. There we go. So I suppose I suppose you could consider this a rising sun or a setting sun, simply depending on which way it's going. Although, right, if we consider it going towards the well, I can't really. I'm sorry, I can't really picture it in my head for some reason. Anyway, the setting sun. Gerund suffix. So gerund is when you have, say, running or setting sun, for instance, and then you end with an ing. And run up as expenses could be to incur expenses. I'm just looking at these crosses since we have this um, these suns in here. Rick's love in Casablanca was the character Ilsa. And a PC shortcut for copy is what? Control C and paste is Control V. Okay, board game in which pieces may be captured or crowned at checkers. And Zenith could be the Acme, the highest point, for instance. Not really for instance, just what it is. Window fixtures most used in the summer for short. Could be air conditioning units, window, window mounted air conditioning units, ACs. And martial arts action star Jackie Chan. Not glossy as a photo finish. Could be a matte finish. Okay. And a submission to a contest would be an entry. Oh, monkey's uncle. Right. Sorry, I do know this phrase. I just couldn't think of it for some reason. I'll be a monkey's uncle, one might say. And so that is an astonished person claiming to be an animal relative. <laughs> a monkey's uncle. Kind of tide whose opposite is spring. So you have a spring tide and then it's opposite the neap tide. And a covering scene at a ballpark could very well be a tarp, tarpaulin, I suppose. I don't know why that's particularly seen at a ballpark, but maybe covering the, the bleachers when not in use? I'm not sure. A baby dog could be a pup, a puppy. And it may be turned with a swipe on an e-reader. You could turn the page by swiping. Here we have any junior to his father it would be a namesake. It would share a name. And composer Stravinsky would be Igor Stravinsky, known for the, the Rite of Spring and the Firebird. Scrumptious bits are maybe morsels. And if uh, someone is brusque, they're terse. I don't know, clipped and not, not speaking at length. Oh, Miss Universe is the is the pageant. I see. I never I never actually I should have gone back and looked at this once I'd entered the sun's the sun, and I why did I not do that? Did I just gloss over it? I can't remember. Anyway, Miss Universe is the pageant whose hosts have included Bob Barker, Dick Clark, and Steve Harvey, I suppose. Pick taken at arm's length would be a selfie. C64 across is blank Las Vegas, 1964 film starring 52 down. Now, 52 down. Oh, right. C64 across. I just looked at that, didn't I? Elvis, I guess, maybe? E-L-V-I-S? Uh, oh, Viva Las Vegas, right. Elvis had a song, Viva Las Vegas, so that must be the film. Pyromaniac's Obsession would be Fire. And Ghostbusters director Reitman. Ivan Reitman, looks like. And 401k alternatives for short are IRAs, right. This is... Um, uh, 
in, uh, individual retirement accounts, which are personal, sort of a personal pension you could maintain, whereas a 401k would be a company uh, in the U.S. These are all, these are U.S. specific terms. Uh, 401k is a company-sponsored pension. Okay, toward the dawn, oh, it would be east. So look at that. We have a um, counterpart. We have our rising sun in the east and then our setting sun in the west. Big rigs cargo. A haul, perhaps? And on the blank, unfriendly, on the outs, maybe? You could say we're on the outs, we're unfriendly with one another. A rebounding sound could be an echo. And eau de cologne, so... Uh, oh, the French for water, eau de cologne, as opposed to eau de toilette, I suppose, which is for women, I guess, and then eau de cologne for men. Acorn, for one, is a nut. And what draws recording artists to Nashville and jazz lovers to New Orleans? The music scene in each of those cities, one might say. And a war god who's a foe of Wonder Woman. Uh, well, Ares was the god of war, so there we go. That's straightforward enough. And Victoria Beckham nay Adams. So this must have been the um, maiden name of, the, what, the wife of, what's his name? Beckham. Uh, the footballer, the soccer player. I can't remember his name. That is totally absurd. I'm sorry. How embarrassing. Anyway, nay meaning born in French. So this is indicating her uh, name prior to marriage. David Beckham. That's his name. Sorry. Okay, actor McKellen, Ian McKellen, and customer's routine order is the usual. Occupied as a lavatory is it's in use, and it's my turn, Would you could say I'm up, it's my turn, and a cylindrical pasta is penne, the little tubes, the thinnish tubes, thinner than, say, rigatoni. Uh, anything else here we didn't see? I don't think so. Biblical garden could be Eden, and 1992's A Few Good Men, and then Ike's partner in the candy aisle. Um, Mike and Ike is a kind of candy that I think of almost exclusively as seeing only ever in movie theaters in the U.S. and maybe nowhere else in my life. Legitimate could be valid. And reply to who's there. You could say, it's me. Greek bees are betas. And that's blank hadn't heard. That's one I hadn't heard which I thought was going to be Monkey's Uncle. I thought that was going to be one I hadn't turned, but it turns out I had. I just couldn't recognize the crosses for some reason. Continental currency since 2002. So this is referring to continental Europe, um, much of which the Eurozone countries uh, use the euro as their national currencies. And to apply as lotion is to rub in that lotion. An instrument heard at a ballpark is an organ, the sort of um, many, many... Um, Baseball stadiums have a built-in organ. I wonder how many of them have real organs. They're probably almost all purely electronic, I would think. I wonder if any of them used to have pipe organs. Uh, where eggs are laid. Eggs are laid in a nest. And a Washington, D.C. baseball player, for short, is... Actually, sorry, it just occurred to me, they probably don't even have organs, most of them. They probably just have recordings of music played on organs. I wonder how many baseball players how many ballparks have ever had actual organs, electronic or pipe, and especially pipe? Anyway, sorry. Washington, D.C. baseball player for short, Nat, short for the Nationals, which has come up in the crossword numerous times recently. Here is to clear as a diner's table is to bust the table. I think that's a relatively U.S.-specific term. Appropriate, given it contains the letters U.S. Um, well, I guess, what's, I guess what's more specific to the U.S. is not so much that term in general, but the concept of Bussing one's own table, using bus to, to describe clearing one's own table. That, I think, is more of a U.S. specific term is what I meant to say. All right. Moving on up and I'll be there for you for short. Our theme songs, I guess. Is moving on up the Jeffersons? And I'll be there for you as friends. And year and Buenos Aires must be año. That sounds right. That sounds like year. And a mausoleum is a tomb, and regarding is as to. Regarding this puzzle, we have completed it. I think we have. That was, I think, a very gentle puzzle with a very gentle theme. And it's the kind of theme that if you do see it, and I don't know, I suppose if you were a relatively new solver, it wouldn't occur to you to do this, because I put those in because I've 
encountered so many crossword themes that it just seemed, it seemed self-evident that I would need to. But of course, that wouldn't necessarily be something you would immediately jump to if you, if you haven't done this a number of times. But I do think in general, this was a very solvable crossword. I think this is a good crossword for a relatively new solver. So if you know somebody who's trying to um, improve at the New York Times crossword, they're, maybe, they, maybe they're thinking of trying it out, this might be a good one to direct them to, I think. I think it, it, it was relatively approachable and straightforward, and it has a nice, clear theme that is clever, and if you do spot it, it helps you solve the puzzle a bit. So, a good one by Drew Schmenner. I enjoyed it. And let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. How about that? Um, what do we have? I'm going to try and get through these relatively quickly because I don't have a huge amount of time. So, uh, Alan Iton explains the mathematical way to define an ellipse, or at least one of the ways to define an ellipse, is as all of the points whose distances to two points, the foci, sum to some number. So this is because I'd sort of wondered aloud, how do you define the foci? And then Alan Iton is going the other way and saying, well, um, you take two points, you declare those as being the the foci, the, fo the focus points of the, the the focal points of the ellipse, and then any sort of given distance from those two points defines an ellipse. And you can sort of imagine that if you think, if you sort of imagine two points on a piece of paper, and then imagine kind of plotting out all of the instances of uh, distances to two points summing to the same number from those two. It's, <laughs> I can't really find a good way to explain it with in speech, but yes, imagining it on a piece of paper, I can see how that would result in an ellipse. Anyway, thank you, Alan. Anders Weinstein has a good point about the puzzle's title yesterday, Bonus Features, which now takes on a double meaning, he says. Each movie title includes an extra bonus letter, so the bonus feature, bonus letter, and they add up to the outtakes, a bonus feature commonly included on film DVDs. That's true. I was thinking of outtakes in the sense of material sort of left out of films, not edited into the films, but Anders Weinstein has this additional observation that the name of the puzzle, bonus features, also is something that itself can include outtakes on a DVD. Very good point. Paul Wills explains that slips are individual dockings for boats. A singular dock will tend to have a multitude of slips for boats to park at. And Heather Whaley explains what was going on with golf tan. She says, most golfers wear one glove, usually on the less dominant hand. Therefore, you get a significantly darker hand in comparison to the other. Unlike a farmer's tan, which is from the mid bicep and including both hands. Thank you, Heather Whaley. I had no idea about that glove thing. So... Uh, that makes perfect sense. Thank you. And uh, finally, DSZ says, Gallaudet University is a deaf university in Washington, D.C. My friend studied there to be an interpreter. I believe all of the classes are done in ASL, American Sign Language, Sign Language, and very few hearing students are accepted. That's very interesting. So Gallaudet University, um, oriented towards deaf students and deaf studies. Very interesting. Thank you. All right. And that's that. Those are all of the, I think there might have been a few more clues, but I, I'm in a bit of a rush and I did six, so I think that was okay, or five maybe. Anyway, thank you to everybody who left comments. Thank you to you for getting to the end of this video. Thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. And thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. How about that? For some thanks. <laughs> thank you to all of those people. And thanks to everybody who has recommended the channel to anybody at any point there. Made it five thanks, maybe. Okay. Um... It's a sincere set of thanks, though. I must I must emphasize that. I'll be back tomorrow for the Tuesday puzzle. Another should be relatively approachable themed crossword. And I hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care. Mm -hmm.